All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews, The Manga Show, episode number 12. And I got a few segments for you here in this episode. We'll take a look at the Atsushi Kaniko exhibition that was held over at Vanilla Gallery. We'll take a look at some of my manga haul for the month and some art books. But first, finally, I started to get on the Umez, Umez Kazuo Umez Perfection. Um, these were released in 2005 to 2006, the Perfection series. There was a bunch of them. This is, uh, of course, God's Left Hand, The Devil's Right Hand, Kami no Hidarite, Akuma no Migite, and I got some other ones to show you as well. So hang tight there, but let's start off with these because these are amazing. My homie Chu has been telling me to pick these up for a couple years now. I kept on sleeping on them and they kept on getting more and more expensive harder and harder to find so i was working really hard in october and i splurged and got these for myself so these are not for sale as many of you know i also am a bookseller uh japanbookhunter.com but when i was searching for these which was really hard to find i found number one somewhere and i picked it up and just yesterday i found number two so i will have a set of these for sale um Take the obi off there. These have wild covers on them. And you can't open the book without taking off the cover. So let's remove the cover. And these covers are just so sick. They really do make the book. So many amazing scenes from this manga on the cover. And this is my favorite of all Ume's works. After, and again, as you'll see, has the best opening of any horror manga ever made. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. These covers are pretty sick too. Look at that texture. A little sticker on there. Big comic special, Umez Perfection, number 12. I love the inking, the dye, the dip dye. Of course, Rusty Scissors is the opening story. And then we have Queen Spider's Tongue, Erased an Eraser. The layouts are wild and uh lots of english in the front here and in the, like in the contents and stuff that you didn't have in the old tonko bones or in those bunko repros and you definitely didn't have this amazing color these were released for the 50th year anniversary of umez as a mangaka and there we go we have Sho and Sho's sister with scissors coming out of her face. And again, love the, the love the color, but two color printing like this is amazing. Or three, I should say, because they got the it's not it's not printing though, because it's on the yellow paper, right? I don't think the camera does the yellow justice, but Of course, it was all a dream. But this creepy face in the window is not a dream. And I always say it, but Umez is the master of horrified children's faces. Or was it a creepy face? So I'm not going to go through every page, of course, because these are big bricks. But we do want to check out some of this color, right? Color is amazing. It's fucking rusty scissors. And uh, this is where a sister pukes out everything but the kitchen sink. Dirt.
<laughs> I like this. Her dad just starts puking too. And puking and puking and puking. It's amazing. Oh, this part. Fucking pukes out a skeleton. Amazing. Anyways, yeah, these are put together quite well. Oh yeah, she pukes out, like they pull out a tricycle. Pukes out a tricycle. Or maybe they pulled it out of her, her belly. It's been years since I've read it, but I'm going to come back and reread it now that I have the perfection edition. Dude, check out those color pages. I'm telling you, the they're so vibrant in person, the camera just does not pick them up as well. Maybe I should drop it down here a little bit, get more light on it. Rusty scissors, amazing. Yeah, the colors, just great. Erased an eraser. So the stories do tie together. Ooh, look at that. Look at that splash page. Sick. You gotta love full color Umez because you don't get it often. And Queen, Queen's, Queen Spider's Tongue. Here, when it's on the white paper, it looks more like traditional, you know, printing. But the print quality is much higher than those old Tonko Bones. Which I have the Bunko set, I have the Tonko Bone set. Um, I often sell the Tonko Bone sets. Go to japanbookhunter.com. I post every morning, sometimes in the afternoon as well. But if you want to get in there, if you want to sneak a sneak a purchase in there, I usually post between 9 a.m. and noon Japan time. So there's a little tip for you if you want to get in there. I know that sometimes I post rare stuff and it sells right away and people get bummed because they couldn't get it. But uh, if there's something on there that you're looking for and you want, DM me if I can find it. I shall. Because that is what I do, is I hunt books. And this is volume two. Maybe um, I'll just show you the cover of volume two. We're not going to flip through it because I have more Umez Perfection to show you. Ooh, check out the texture of this one. And these weren't that expensive when they came out, around $17. But now, you cannot find a set of these for under $100 here in Japan. And most of the time, they're around $60 per volume, if you can find them. And finding them in this kind of beautiful condition, very rare, my friends. 2005 doesn't sound like that long ago, but it was 17 years ago, man. Wow. What's in the fridge? God, that color is amazing. It was a trap. All right, that's enough of God's left hand, the devil's right. I also have the Orochi. Of course, Orochi has been released in English, I believe, by Viz. Of course, um, amazing stuff. This I do have for sale at the moment. Um, yep, go over to my Instagram. Unfortunately, I don't have the Obi for Volume 4. I've been trying to track a copy of Volume 4 down with the Obi for a few weeks now. I cannot find one anywhere. Uh, cause these would look, I mean, honestly, with the Obi lined up on a shelf, they look better. But again, Umez Perfection, very hard to find. This is Umez Perfection 4 and the four volume set of Orochi. Yosh. 
Let's see what we got here. This has the obi, but I have a wrap over it, plastic wrap over it, so that the obi doesn't get damaged. And of course, Orochi is a collection of short stories. Sisters. Shimai. If I recall correctly. And the print quality in the first, I don't know, 50 pages or so is amazing. And then as we move forward. Oh, damn, girl. Hair pull to face slam. Gone, gone. I love Japanese. I love Umez. SFX. Zuzu. Ah. Chikushoku. Rumi. And then she's yelling, Rumi. Gya. Gya is the classic. Is the classic scream. Bata. Is the classic face plant. And then. I'll check out that. That printing is so sick, the texture. It's really hard, but if you feel it, it feels like a little bit rough. Almost like wallpaper. You can see the texture much better there. And then you get basic printing, but still much better than the original Tonko Bones, I'm telling you. These are amazing. And all are equally amazing. Here, let's go on to look at just the, we'll just look at the inside splashes of volume two. There again, we get that awesome texture. Amazing detail. Volume three, and there it's, it's, this is the complete four volume. Of course, I would not show you a partial set of anything, my friends. I like the story stage. This is good. And volume four. Creeping, creeping. Amazing. This one, of course, is me or I because we have an I. All right, moving on. More perfection. I also. I also picked up uh, Kyofu or Fear. Kyofu was originally a three Tonkobon set. Um, this one is not for sale. I'm keeping this one, but I am selling my Tonkobon set, which was uh, the original Tonkobon set. So if you want, hit me up. Easiest way to ever find me is on Instagram. I'm on there for a fucking few hours a day because that's where everyone hits me up for books. So I got to be there when I'm not reading, posting products, or doing product photos, shipping. Shipping is wild. Look at that. Can you see it? Wild light printing they did there. That's not like looking through the back of the page. That is the print. The 800 year old mummy. It's our lead off story.
lots of ghosts or characters based on yokai in Kyofu. But there's also just some psychos in here too. Yeah. Bew! Is the sound effect. Amazing two page spread. Well, kind of. Back to back one pagers, I guess. There's the eyes, there's the car, and there's the talons coming down to pick up the car. And the car being crushed. Betty, 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 Boki. Boki is the sound that you also make for breaking a bone. Then basa, 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 basa. Also amazing. Let's just look at the, the front of this one. The stolen heart. Ubawareta Shinzo. Whoa! Mummy grabbing titty! Not mummy. Zombie? Dead person? Well, I don't know, but those are high school boobies in. Chest cavity exposed. Dang, dude. So that's kill food. Those are amazing. No, you cannot have them. But as I always tell everyone, uh, if you're ever looking for anything, hit me up and I do hunt books. I can usually find stuff. Can't promise I'll find it cheap, but I do my best. Um, these are a couple one shots. This is Perfection 3, Perfection 2. We have Onegai and then uh, Mushitachi no Ie. The insects. The House of Insects, maybe we could say. The House of Bugs. Wow. I should have taken off this plastic cover. Oh no, it's cut off right there. So that is, that there is the full image. Because there's a line right here. It almost looks like a risograph, but... I do not know much about printing, my friends. I know good print quality, bad print quality, badass print quality, and that's about it. Dang! Hung by her hair, not by her neck. Amazing. And again, Print quality is amazing. Much better than the old Tonko Bone on that shitty, shitty paper. They're not glossy, but they, the, the ink quality, I mean, the ink even stands up a little bit. And just the printing quality is so clean. I, you know what I should have done? Here, let me give you an example. So we just looked at Kyofu. This is what Kyofu looked like back in the day. This is a three volume, volume set that I have for sale. Not so clean on number three, but you get what you get. And uh, if you look at the print quality, I mean, of course, size is smaller, traditional Tonko bone size. We looked at this image before. I mean, it's clean. It's not like bleeding or anything like that but not as clean as Ume's perfection. That's for sure. So there's a little bit of a compar I, comparison. I could have compared it next to Kyofu, which would have been pretty dope, but we're 20 minutes in already, my homies. Check out a couple more splashes here. Amazing.
And the other one shot is Nagai. Like a, I don't know, a request or a wish. Whoa. Not good, little kid. Not good at all. Of course, um, as grotesque as Umez is, it's still shoujo horror, you know? It still was geared towards young girls. So our protagonists are usually like little brothers, um, junior high school girls, high school girls. Amazing. Amazing. To be honest, I'm not too sure. I think I might keep these two because uh, they're just so good. They're so good. But what can you do? And this is not all I got recently. I have gotten probably a couple hundred books this last month. So hang in there with me here, my friends. I'm going to show you a little bit more of some of the stuff I got. And I shall be back in one second. All right. Well, what was one second for you was a coffee and some manga prep for me. But since we went over the Umez Perfection editions, I thought that we would look at some of the shoujo horror that I picked up. Of course, keeping with the shoujo horror theme. Um, most of the stuff I picked up for myself, I'm a big he body hit comics collector, especially, uh, you know, Koga Shinichi, Hamashinji, uh, Hino Hideshi, of course, and I have some kind of lesser manga cod that I wanted to show you in this episode that I've been fucking reading recently that are awesome. Um, let's start off with Michi Shintaro. Um, this is the Noroi no Kubi ni Shirohebi ga. So there's uh, the white snake from the cursed head. White Snake from the Cursed Head. Uh, I started reading this yesterday. I'm, I'm about halfway through. It is amazing. Um, check out this cover. So if you're not familiar with Hibari, Hibari was originally a Kashihon publisher, rental manga and books publisher back in the day. So this, these are some examples of some Kashihon. So you can see it says here Hibari Shoten. Sho Shobo, sorry. Uh, Hibari Shobo. And uh, here's another one. The themes were usually like samurai themes, uh, spy thriller themes, action, uh, not so much horror. Although they did do horror. I mean, there were horror. All Kaidan is the most famous uh, horror series that was published in rental comics. Um, and a lot of the rental comic mangaka, such as, uh, let me think, uh, Mizuki Shigeru, of course, Tezuka Osamu, um, Sato Masaaki, uh, a lot of them went on Koga Shinichi, he was Koga Shinsaku back then. They went on to become a very popular mangaka in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and moving forward. Um, I got a whole big set of Kashihon recently that I haven't posted yet. Um, I am gonna sell some Kashihon sets. I just don't know how to put them together yet. I got like, I don't know, a set of 30 or something. But I need to go through and organize them by genre, I think. But anyways, we're not here to talk about Kashihon. We're here to talk about shoujo horror. So the white snake from the cursed head is amazing. This has one of the most amazing opening shoujo horror scenes I've ever seen. First of all, that splash is fucking sick. And it looks like an old lady, right? We open with um, this little girl in a dojo. She's coughing blood. Her parents come in. And it, I guess she's sick. She's got some sort of an illness. They're like, go back to bed. She's like, no, I'm going to die. I don't want to die, but I'm going to die. But I'm going to do it on my own terms. And so she's uh, telling them that they have to place her head 
in a small shrine on the north side so that it's always in the dark, out of the sun, and that she is going to come back from the dead because she wants to live. Her parents fulfill her last wish, and then, check this out, she throws the sword into the wall, runs at it, and chops off her own head, dudes. Dang. So that her head could be put in. And then her body crashes through the, the shoji, through the, the door, paper door there. Arr, goro, goro, goro means rolling on the ground. Her head is rolling on the ground. Amazing opening, right? And then we go on and she, of course, comes back from the dead. She's curse she is going to curse the whole town and that is what she looks like now amazing i keep on saying amazing today but i'm telling you it is amazing see this is why it's the white snake from the cursed head attacking people and stuff, but I'll show you one more scene from this. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't want to spoil it for myself too, but she is cursing the whole town. Um, this girl is on vacation with her family, going to like hot springs or something like that. And, but boom, she's walking along the river. From the river comes the white snake of the cursed head, shooting out of her mouth, wrapping up our unsuspecting victim, and sucking its blood, her blood, popping off her head, arms, and legs. Ba Bam! And then she scatters and falls to the ground. Because she wants to put back together her body because she's just a head, right? And then the, you know, police come. They're like, what the hell happened here? And that's where we're going to stop with this one because that's as far as I've gotten. Don't want to spoil it for myself. Kawashima Norikazu, one of my favorite lesser known Hibari and shoujo horror manga from the, you know, mostly 70s and 80s. I think these, these are 80s releases. One of his covers has a picture of a crazy, a mad woman carrying her dead baby. And there's some stuff going on in the background and blood everywhere. That one goes for anywhere between two and $300. Um, these ones are not quite as expensive. I think these usually go for around $30 each. But uh, Kawashima Norikazu is expensive. Hard to find. These covers are amazing. I read this yesterday. This is Chitarake no Shoujo, the blood-covered little girl. And there is lots of death in this. But before I get into this, since I just kind of was doing some flip through, let's just look a little bit at this. This is Jigoku Hana, or Hellflower. And we're going to get some Hellflowers, I think. They always start off so serene and peaceful, but I love uh, Kawashima Norikazu's style, all that line work and movement. But once again, shoujo horror. I always say it. There's got to be a car accident in there somewhere. Wah! Blasted by the car, burnt alive. Amazing. Unique character style for the, you know. When you get in the shoujo horror, like, post, like, I feel like in the 60s and 70s, until about the mid-70s, at least, then uh, a lot of the styles were the same. But then when you start getting into the 80s, 90s especially, then you get a lot of variant styles. Um, like... Kawashima, Kandamori. Mori. 
Awesome, right? But this, the blood-covered little girl, this is based on an old Japanese folk story that if you see yourself and the, that self of you is dead, then it is predicting your future death. So that's what this story is about. Awesome art. She's out. Something's out here scaring people, but it was a girl in a mask. Scared her friend, playing a little tricky trick. But then she sees herself. Dun, dun, dun. And blood covered little girl. I love it. And she gets chased by all these spirits out of the graveyard, but we figure out where it was where those spirits come from when she's on a school trip with her friends. You know, people are sleeping, she's looking out the window. They're telling ghost stories. Then the bus crashes off of a cliff into the water, catches on fire. And all the children die. Except one. And that is our main protagonist. Who gets amnesia. Blah, blah, blah. Various things happen. And there she is. As she pulls herself out of the river. And she is a blood-covered little girl. I'm going to leave it at that. Let's look at a few more. This is Mori... Uh, Yukiko, Mori Yukiko, it's not cover sick. A little bit more shoujo style. Looks cleaner, romantic, less blood, more story, but still fun to read. This is Ikeuchi Seiichi, uh, Makumba, Noroi, Makumba's curse and that's an amazing cover right all of these are mine 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 but i am putting together some sets of like mixed sets of shoujo horror this hibari stuff um of some of the titles that i really like i'm just you know slowly gathering them and putting them together and i'm gonna put put some little packs together like four five volume packs so that people who are interested can get like a little sample of a few mangaka in one, you know, in one box and then go on from there with their collecting. I wish somebody did that for me. I've bought in some stinkers, man. What is going on? But I've also bought some amazing, amazing ones. Cat-faced boy. Reminds you of Umez, Cat-Eyed Boy. Looks like there's a few shorts in here, probably five or six. Who knows? I need to read it. Lots of text too. Sometimes I like that. Whoa, dude, crucified. He is the sound of screaming when you are on fire. And this, Majo ga kuru yakata 2. I had number one. I thought there was only a number one. And I'm like out book hunting with a homie, Epic Comics. And I ran across this. We we're in Jimbo Cho. And I'm like, wait, there's a two? And this is Mushu Tanaka. I've talked about Mushu Tanaka in the past. And uh, amazing art. It's the, the manner where the witch comes. The manner where the witch comes. This is pretty cool. There's some character profiles. And I just love Mushu's, Mushu Tanaka's art style. Sometimes they can drag on a little bit, but vampires, vampires, vampires. Isn't that sick? I think in a video uh, sometime last year, probably early last year, I covered this 
the volume one of this. Whoa! The hand! So uh, I'm looking forward to getting into this. Um, a couple others. So this is, wait, before you do that. Nine volume set, complete volume set of Shonen, Shonen no Machi ZF. As some of you know, and if you don't, I am a huge Koike Kazuo collector. Hirano Jin is also amazing, but uh, Koike, as my friend said, everything he touches is gold, horror gold. Um, this is science fiction horror. We can see some UFOs here. The UFOs are obviously the science fiction. The fact that these aliens are robotic vampires is where it starts to turn into horror. This girl is an alien. And we have a ragtag. I mean, this is 80, I want to say 85. Oh, no, 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 no. 77, 1977. So, uh, eh, science fiction was going strong. A lot of my uh, SF magazines and SF books are from 76, 77, 78, 79. And that's my favorite era for Japanese sci-fi. Um, but... This is a story about a ragtag group of kids that go to try to find a crashed UFO. And while they're gone from their small town, vampiric aliens have taken over, putting everyone to sleep. And they have to save this girl who is an alien. It's very confusing if you don't read it, but the art is amazing. Was that rain. They find the girl standing over the dead corpse of one of her friends, one of their friends. They think that she killed him, but then later we come to find out she can't speak, but she has a doll and whoever holds the doll can speak with her through telepathy. It was fucking amazing. She's jumped off a cliff to escape into a river, but is saved by one of the boys. It's not Koike if you don't have boobies. And let's flip ahead here to, so there's a bunch of spaceships in the sky and then one keeps on coming down. There we go, we got the UFO coming down. It wants to take the girl back. Check out that two pager, sick. So it's trying to beam her up kids are trying to save her then out pops our vampiric aliens and we have another encounter later where they come back to take her and this time check it out hanging on by her hair it's a lot of details I haven't gone into. Wrestling with her. And then one of them falls out. Smashes his head open. And then his head's all smashed open here. And then we find out after they flip him over, that he is an android. So, android vampire UFO invasion. I have only read volume one. I've got eight more to go. I'm going to probably do a full review on this. This is actually an extra set I have that I've ran into. It's not in the best condition, but these are really hard to find in the set. Um, I have my own personal set over here. And so it's not really shoujo horror, but it kind of transitioning over. Um, this is a collection of horror from the Kashihon rental comics era um, from around 1958 by Shunichi Karasawa. 
Shunichi Karasawa, Karasawa Shunichi. And I think this was published around 1997. I've been looking for this for a while and I just tripped on it this month. Um, I don't remember where they posted the date. 1997, my friends. And in the Kashihon era style, of course. So like I said, there wasn't a lot of horror, but there was definitely some horror. In that rental manga era. Oh no, whenever there's a baby, there's death. Baby death. And yeah, these are mostly, these were mostly released, I think in 1958. But you know, hard to find, very expensive. Most of those rental comics will range between at the low end, $40 in, you know, whatever condition you can find them in. And at the high end, of course, you start getting into like Tezuka's Metropolis, uh, $2,000. Or you get into Umez's, you know, something, early Umez, um, the sisters, oh, she my sisters, uh, God, I can't remember. Um, or just pre cat eyed boy stuff, then you're looking at, you know, two to $500 per book. So if I can get a reprint like this, I'm always happy. A lot of the Umez stuff has been reprinted and I have a lot of those actually, those reprints in my personal collection. Maybe I should track some of those down. People would probably like those. Whoa, angry vegetables. Is that one a weed? Is that the marijuana? It's angry mushroom. Of course, you're gonna have samurais and ninja in that era. Everyone loves some samurai and ninja. I wanna read some of these essays in here too, but yes. Karasawa. I like that cover. Let's look under the cover for a second. Ah, nice. Nice. I need to pull off those dust jackets more often. Gosh. <clears throat> Last two. So, uh, these are from kind of similar era, but these are reprints. So Bon Tentaro put out another. Go up a little bit here, people. Bon Tentaro put out a Bon Tentaro Publishing put out another small collection of Bon Tentaro's works. Um, early in the year, these have disappeared. These are gone. They do short runs of these like little reprints. This is all reprints of stories that were released in Manga OK in 1968. 1969, sorry. Um, we got four stories in here and this is uh, Gendai Furo Shoujo Den, Sasurai Tomi Nagare Uta. It's pretty long, but contemporary Bad Girl Diary, Diary of a Contemporary Bad Girl, Wandering Tomi's Flowing Song. Something like that. Sorry, I kind of translated it on the fly there. Beautiful art. Amazing stuff for 1969. Bon Tentaro, of course, was a famous tattoo artist started off as a fighter pilot in an art. He was an artist and then he, in World War II, he was a fighter pilot. He was one of the few to survive. He went on to become an illustrator and a mangaka while he was doing tattoo art. Was married seven times, had a wild, wild life. And he portray, pick, portrays, I think a lot of, uh, Stuff that he was adjacent to. Of course, in those days, if you're a tattoo artist, you were tatting the yaks. 
So his stories are all about bad girls and bad boys. Love it. Um, I actually have, when these came out, I bought like three of them. So I have a couple of them for sale right now. And uh, always one for myself. And then finally, right here, Ijima Shiro. He did, I've talked about it before, the three, ser the three volume series th that were reprinted um, from a uh, comic black, uh, I Married a Gorilla. And then there's a couple of others, right? There was the horror, horror tits, um, the birth of the human fruit, and this one, which is amazing. This is She no Alcohol, or Alcohol of Death. Um, Gendai Comics Dokuhon Special. Oh, wait, it says right here. Ichiro Ijima, Gendai Comic Dokuhon Anthology. These are all from G Gendai Comics. These are all stories that were published in Gendai Comics. Again, Gendai, fucking hard to find, my friends. I collect manga magazines pretty hard these days for my own collection because... You can find amazing manga in them, and then you can try to track down other works that they've done. But uh, just Ijima's style is just so good. And the stories are short, short and to the point. This girl kills that girl, tosses her over the balcony to steal her man. Um, but let's take a look at. I've read, I've read half of this, but let's go to the cover story, which is Alcohol of Death. He looks like a wino, a whiskey wino. That's a bunch of whiskey bottles there. He, he fucks with the hard stuff, my friends. He's supposed to be working, like he's at his drafting table. We don't know if he's like an artist or an illustrator or something like that, but he's just getting wasted. He doesn't want to work. Goes out with the ladies as you do. Wasted, praying to God for something. Then we get our action. The kids. Papa comes home drunk. They're not so happy with him. He's out there philandering, out getting wasted all the time, not doing his duties. So these little kids fill up a fire truck full of booze. More whiskey, more whiskey, and they start pumping it into him. Man, I wish I had that fire truck full of booze. Um, I, t I did a little bit of a flip through of this before, but I don't know if it was for my Patreon, Quenchy Sean Reviews Patreon, where I post all my wild stuff. Um, one dollar a month, and uh, or if I did it in an IG live, I do IG lives on Japan Book Hunter sometimes. So I don't know. Go check those out. But even if I did this before, who cares? It is amazing, dude. And then after they pump them full of the booze, the mama lights the match and tosses it, and they casually stroll out the door. And that, my fine friends, is some shoujo horror and some repros of some old school stuff. Awesomeness, man. Awesomeness. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, I'm over here at Local 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 Returns, Atsushi Kaneko Tribute Exhibition. So many contributing artists. This is at Vanilla Gallery in Ginza, uh, Mori Izumi, uh, Peach Momoko, uh, Psycho Graphics, just so many Japanese and uh, foreign artists contributed. And of course, there was tons of illustrations, original panels, and prints by Atsushi Kaneko. This took up both rooms of the gallery. Unfortunately, I couldn't buy anything big. I didn't really buy any of the merch. I bought books. I bought some signed copies of Local 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 and the last signed copy of Search and Destroy, but the art was amazing. It was great to see so many people contribute to the legacy that is Atsushi Kaneko. Um, just a lot of cool stuff. Of course, all of his best 
you know, all of his famous characters from his newest series, Evil, as well as Search and Destroy, Soil, Wet Moon, Bambi and Her Pink Gun, um, a little bit of everything, Hunky Punky, I mean, all of his great titles. You know, the prints were $300 each, unnumbered, and the original artwork and panels were, were $2,000 to $4,000, so I didn't buy anything. That's Peach Momoko there on the left. I wanted that, but it was $3,000. But it was fantastic to see his original art up close and in person. So if you're in Tokyo now, go over to Vanilla Gallery and check it out. All right, finally, let's take a look at some art books I picked up recently. Maybe a couple more that I picked up in the past but I haven't shown yet on this channel. This is Nagai Go Tobira E, Go Nagai World. Um, not a ton of color pages in this, but it is an awesome book and you will see why I think so in one second. This came out, I believe in 2000. I know, in 2000. And basically it profiles all of his most famous characters and series. We start off with some illustrations, of course, Devilman stuff, Mao Dante, Great Majinga, Z Majinga. Abashiri Ika, um, Animal Kedaman, Dorodoron Emakun, I love Omurai Kun. It says all of them down here at the bottom in this corner. It's kind of hard for you to see. But we'll go through all of the illustrations first, and then I'll just kind of flip through the black and white section. But that's the section I actually like because it has it separated into different sections. The part of Dark Hero. Dark Hero Pen. Pen means kind of like an edit or section. And then it's separated by character and it gives you some like profile information down here, which is sick. Um, I actually have this for sale right now. If there's anything I show and I say it's for sale, just go to my Instagram, Japan Book Hunter. That's where I'm slang and also have japanbookhunter.com, the website, but not much gets put up there because it sells on Insta so fast that I don't have a chance to put it up there. And to be honest, I'm so damn, damn busy all the time. It's hard for me to have time to sit down and post things to the website. Violence Jack is one of my favorites. Just love it. I have the full 27? Uh, 24 volume series 29 yeah I have the original Tonko Bone set too I also have the new Violence Jack it's like two super wides almost as big as an omnibus Shuten Doji so this just goes through, and then we get to the robot section. Robot section sick. And the part of sexy. So the Harenshi hen. Harenshi Gakuen, of course. Famous, love it. It's just cool how they showed the original two-page spread from Shonen Jump. Shukan Shonen Jump, to be exact. Weekly Shonen Jump. Kekko Kamen, I love it. Maboroshi Panti, I love it, but man, it's expensive these days. Um, I had, I had Maboroshi and I sold it, and now I'm having trouble finding Another one for myself. Abashiri Ika. And hero, heroine. Of course, cutie honey.
Dororon and Makun. Jushin Laiga. I've... I have not had the chance to read. And then School, the part of School. I love these English translations, they're funny. Historical drama, etc. And then we have an interview with the man himself in the back, which is cool for me. But there is Google Lens these days. This is amazing. I keep forgetting to show it. This is Umez. Ka Umez Kazuo Bishoujo Collection. The Beautiful Girls Selection by Umez. Umez Girls Collection. It says in English there. Let me take off this obi. The obi makes it a little harder to flip through. And you just gotta love the girls' faces. I believe I showed this somewhere, but I went back through my past five videos of manga hauls to see if I'd shown this before, and I could not find a video where I had this in. And I'm like, I would look for this for so long. Well, I put off buying this for so long. It's getting harder and harder to find too. There's these little Umez comments in the corners. He says, I don't actually remember drawing this. I was too busy at the time. <laughs> I imagine when Umez was in his peak performance, he was so busy because he put out so much stuff between, you know, mid seventies and mid nineties until he finished 14 and then he went on his sabbatical. He actually lives down the, the Umez house is right down the road from me. Amazing art, right? And it's so cool to see it in this big format. This is one of the covers of Orochi. Sendre or baptism, as it was called in English. And we do have a little bit of manga in here, some manga panels from Sendre. God, so creepy. If you haven't read Sendre, it's, you know, it's about this little girl, but really it's about the mother has her brain transplanted in the little girl, whom she obviously murdered to do so. Orochi, of course, the classic Orochi cover, the cover on the Umez Perfection Edition. It's one of the splashes for between chapters. That's the splash for the story stage, which is one of the last ones in one of the volumes there of Perfection. You know, we talked about it before. You remember, the video's not that long. This is the stuff I like, pages from manga magazines that he published in. Amazing. Amazing because a lot of those I'll never get my hands on. I did pick up a stack of manga magazines recently, a lot of uh, Sunday that he was in, that he published again in, some other series. Here we have profiles of the girls. Yara, just not as wild as most of his stuff, but very touching. Um, Mika from Makoto, Makoto-chan. The girls from 14. I mean, if you want to really dive deep into Umez, you need this. Whoa, 14. Oh, no, no. I, 
No, not 14, because 14 is, would be Chicken Man, um, Shingo. My name is Shingo. I think I still have some Umez art. Yes, I do have one left. Check this out. That's them running away. Uh, atop the, this is them atop the Tokyo Tower. And this is them climbing the Tokyo Tower. That is obviously not original art. It's printed repro, but it is awesome to have. I think that's still for sale at japanbookhunter.com. Go take a look. Yeah, I love all these book files. I need to go through and just read this because I've read a lot of Umez. I have a lot of Umez that I haven't finished yet, but I've read a lot. And uh, some of the characters get all muddled in your head. So it's good to... Uh, she my sisters? The, no, oh no, this is the the Kitsunitsuki Shoujo. This is such a cute story. It's a, based on an old legend of the girl possessed by a fox. A lot of his early Kashihon stuff was all very shoujo, not very horror. But he came into his own man and there's the man himself. I love a weirdo. Man, I love weirdos. My favorite. And we have this awesome illustration section in the back. The best. Rusty scissors. Show's sister when he's dreaming of scissors coming out of her face. Little manga in the back. And all the references. It's just an amazing book. That is Umez Girls Collection. I've been selling a lot of Noriyoshi Orai, and I found this one. I've, I had illustration a couple times. But this is illustration to Genma. So I found this when I was in Jimbocho with uh, one of the homies. I was actually with uh, Ed Piscor. Yes. Good times, man. I'm talking manga. Enjoyed it a lot. And found this on the shelf at a place called... Uh, what is that? Kawashima? No, Nagashima. I can't remember everything, man. I mean, over there you have Nagashima, Sawaguchi, Yumeno. There's so many great manga shops over there. Of course, Famed for his Star Wars posters he did for Empire Strikes Back. But, and he did 91 issues of ja the Japanese magazine. He did the covers of 91 issues of SF Adventure magazine, a science fiction magazine, which were all amazing, which he chronicled in the Women of Myths, the Ladies of Myths. Just an amazing illustrator. Very distinctive style. He did all kinds of stuff. He did horror like this. He did science fiction. He did mythical, like the women from myths. He did uh, a lot of portraits of famous people. He did stuff like this that was roughly printed in various magazines. He did war scenes from World War II, World War I, the Russo-Japanese War of uh, 1901, 
I haven't studied Japanese history for a while. I know book dates, don't know history dates so well sometimes. And that is Noriyoshi Orai Illustrations 2 Gemma. Sick, such a great cover too. Very good. Uh, we'll just do two more, I guess. I was gonna do some Hayashi Seichi, Seichi Hayashi stuff, but I got a bunch, so why do one? I'll save all of it for the next one, I promise. But this is Cream Lemon Memory, Pop Chaser, of course, from the anime from 1985. The anime is so fun. I love the anime. It just captures that 80s Japanese anime vibe so well. And the fashion is awesome. The art is awesome. The characters are awesome. And per 80s, you have a combination of robots, rip dudes, and sexy time. Because people were partying in the 80s. This is for sale, but uh, not sure. Uh, not sure if I want to sell it. It's so cool. Go on YouTube, check out some trailers. They don't have the full. I was actually looking for the full anime on there because I haven't seen it for so long. I mean, what's more 80s than this page? The hair, the blazer on a lady with a tie, the, you know, Shapes, triangles, and circles, and geometric shapes thrown in there. Nothing more 80s than that. And we have some cuts from the movie. I think there's some character profile, uh, some character profiles and uh, concept sketches, which I always like. And then we have some storyboards from the movie really is a sick book if you're into anime i know i know i'm supposed to be doing manga here but i gotta throw in a little bit of something something extra you know and another rad thing about this oh, here, these color pages are too good to skip yeah man check it out vinyl record not vinyl, the plastic record, floppy plastic, with the theme song to Pop Chaser on there. Nothing on the back. It's one-sided. And one more. This is not an art book. This is not anime. But this is the size of an art book, and I have the camera set up for art books. So let's take a look at Otomo's Hanzo and Gretel. Yes, man, yes, I finally tracked it down, finally bought it. I've been meaning to buy this for so long. Amazing. I was out shopping with Epic Comics, a homie from Instagram that was visiting Japan. We were doing some manga hunting together in Jimbo Cho. He actually asked me, he's like, dude, do you ever see Hansel and Gretel around? And I was like, I never have seen it in a shop in the wild. I've seen it online. Prices are wild online, you know? So like, I like to find stuff out in the wild. I should show how many stories are in here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 21 stories, man. 21 stories. Almost all of them from the early 70s. I think there might be one from the 80s in here. Or two, uh, no, there's a few. 78 to 81 is what we're looking at. This was released in 1981. Hansel and Gretel, this book. And it's all manga, all shorts. You can see that he's really latched onto his style. which I should just do a video, go through Hansel and Gretel, his old stuff, maybe some early works like Juon, A Gun Report, and uh, you know, uh, Highway Star, stuff like that, and then compare it with some of his stuff around the time of Akira.
It's so Looney Tunes, right? But in Otomo's kind of unique, realistic, and cartoony style. And look at that. That's not Looney Tunes. No Looney Tunes I've ever seen. The use of negative space. Amazing. If you can take a shot every time I've said amazing in this video, go back, rewatch it. Take a shot every time I said amazing. There, there's three. <laughs> You'd be tanked. I, I'm doing videos much less these days, my friends. And because of that, um, not quite as smooth as I used to be. I love the motion here. Out of control. And that, my fine friends, is Hansel and Gretel by Otomo, 1981. Thanks for being here, everyone. I really appreciate it. And thanks for being patient with my videos. I know people are like, do more profile videos of mangaka. Yeah, I want to. I want to, but then I also usually read 10 to 15, you know, manga from that mangaka in order to do a video on them. And I just haven't had the time. I'm lucky to get, you know, a few Tonkobon in a week these days. But I get a look at a lot of awesome books thanks to all of you. Your requests to buy my books. Um, teaching me so much. Just teaching me so much about art books and manga and everything else. Um... I know a lot, but there's always more to know. There's always more to know. And uh, if you want to see more videos more often, go over to my Patreon page, Koenji Shan Reviews. It's not for the faint of heart, though. If you are sensitive, it's not for you. But $1 a month, I have an archive of about 70 videos now. Uh, flip throughs of wild and crazy stuff from my collection that I cannot show here on YouTube. And uh, Japan Book Hunter on Instagram is where I'm slanging books. And JapanBookHunter.com is where I'm posting them as well. Uh, what else can I say? Love you all. Spread the word. Spread the manga word. Everyone who spreads a little bit of manga to a friend, a family member, an acquaintance. You're doing Odin's fine work for the manga community. And with that, my fine friends, Matane.